everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lena. I have been looking forward to doing this video for several weeks now, so we're just gonna jump into things because I could talk for two hours. I'm gonna try not to, but we're just gonna jump right into things. So if you didn't know, I was a member of the Disney College program from April 2018 through the new year, so January 3rd of 2019 was when I left and had to go home. I worked merchandise in Frontierland. I worked several different stores, so Trading Post, Big Owls, Prairie Outpost, Briar Patch, and Splash Mountain Gifts. Splashdown Photos. That's the real name. I never called it by its real name, but... In all of that fun time, I took some really cool photos that are illegal by Disney standards. Now, I'm going to preface by saying I'm a rule follower, so I don't have as many as a lot of people do, and that's something I wish I would have done. Something I regret is not knowing how to break the rules, but I have some really cool backstage photos that I want to share with you guys, photos that have been living on my camera roll for almost three years now, and it's time for them to see the light of day. Now that it's pretty much guaranteed that I will not be working back in Disney ever again, which moment of silence for that. Thank you. Um, I am going to share photos that will pretty much prevent me from ever being hired by the Disney company again. Should this blow up and go viral, especially. I don't see that happening, but um, I wanted to show you guys some of the fun stuff, the behind the scenes, the backstage magic, because I promise there is magic. It's not all dirty secrets. So I've got my laptop sitting in front of me and that, so I, I can look at the photos. I'm also gonna slide myself over and put the photos here so that you can see them too. And we can take a look at these together. So this first video GIF boomerang is of me in my Frontierland costume. This is my blues skirt. I would give anything to wear this costume again. Uh, this doesn't look crazy. I mean, this is Magic Kingdom costuming. Costuming is located behind Magic Kingdom. Um, there's really not much to say about it, except that's where you check out all of your costumes. And I, I say, look who's back. It had been a few weeks since I was in the costume. There's a whole bunch of backstory. I'll do that in a different video, but I was so excited to be in my blues for the first time in several weeks. So I took a boomerang, had to show it off. This was on social media already. This isn't one of those deep, dark, secret backstage photos. If you even want to call it backstage, cast members, you can debate about that in the comments. But this is what I wanted to start off with because it technically is Disney backstage. Normal people, non-cast members can't just go into costuming. So that's the first one. This next photo, also doesn't seem backstage because Disney tries every so often, a couple times a year, a few times a year, to boost morale and celebrate different holiday seasons with the cast. So this picture was taken in the tunnels. This was, if you're thinking about it from in the park, this was behind and underneath Cinderella's castle. It does not look this fun and festive normally. Um, but they put up backdrops, they had character meet and greets for us. If you think about it too hard, yes, it is very weird, but we all did it anyways. It was super fun. I'm super happy in this picture. This is the other costume I wore all the time. It was my stock costume, so I worked all of the same stores. I was just stocking it instead of on registers. I wasn't as guest facing. But I'm here with one of my coworkers who was also on the college program and one of my coordinators who also did stock sometimes. So we met Pluto. Again, don't think about it too hard, but that one is in the tunnels. You just wouldn't know it, so I can technically share that one. Um, these next three photos are technically above Main Street. I'm trying to remember which side of Main Street. I'm thinking it's been a while. This should be above like Main Street Jewelers and Main Street East, not the Emporium, the opposite side. Um, there's offices back there, there's conference rooms. And essentially what was happening in these pictures is they were doing previews of what the holiday merchandise was gonna look like. So we got to see everything and know what all the products were going to be before they hit the shelves. And it was only a couple days before but we got to look at everything and kind of see what was going on. Um, Christmas time was the only time I got to do some sort of product reveal, um, but I got to go up. This is me in my Memento Mori costume. I did work Liberty Square a few times. 
especially near the end of my program. So I was up here with uh, Steven, you saw him in the stock costume. Here we worked the same Liberty shift conveniently. So they set up this photo station. You can see in the second photo, people in their Main Street costumes. <clears throat> You're not supposed to share photos of different lands costumes in the same picture, but I threw caution to the wind when I decided to post this video. So um, there again, nothing too special about this. You wouldn't necessarily know it's backstage if I didn't tell you, but I've also got a picture here with two of my coordinators. Um, I loved that costume. I loved working in that shop, but we got to go while we were working and spend a few minutes, 10, 15 minutes now, five, 10 minutes walking around. I think we did get cookies too. Um, I think it was the cookies that you got at Christmas parties. So they let us try those and sample. So that was that photo op. Um, so this next picture, <clears throat> and this is also a fun tip for you Disney World travelers. This is something everyone should know. Uh, this was the one and only cast compliment I got. And it was from a coworker of mine, which was a bit of a bummer. So this is why I'm going to tell you now to how you make your cast members day, how you make your vacation more magical is by sharing magic with your cast members and um, expressing your gratitude and noticing the small things that cast members do for you on your vacation. So you're gonna tweet and you're gonna do at WDW today and you can also hashtag cast compliment. Generally, if you do both of those together, Disney will find your cast member and share this compliment with them. So this was posted on the bulletin board in the back hallway behind Trading Post, which is the trading, the pin, the big pin trading store in Magic Kingdom. There is a hallway back there. There were bulletin boards. And so one of the things on there was our cast compliments. So there's, she took a picture, my coworker took a picture of me because I gave her a birthday treat and she tweeted me and it was a shout out on the bulletin board. So I really appreciated her in that moment and I wish I got to take this print out home, but they didn't give it to me, but that's okay. I still have a picture of the picture. Now is when we start getting into the juicier details. These next two photos were from my days stocking Prairie Outpost. Prairie Outpost has since closed, so unfortunately you cannot go. Um, and one of the fun parts of stock, fun fact, at least in Magic Kingdom, and specifically Frontierland, when you were in stock, they did give you an iPhone. You did need to be reachable by your coordinators and leaders at all times. Uh, Disney World merchandise is not like typical merchandise. You don't wear headsets, you don't have walkie-talkies, you're kind of on your own. But when you're stocking, you have to be accessible. So we got iPhones, classic 2005 clip it to the belt. And so I had to carry that around with me. And so there were a couple times where I had so much food waste that I had to send a picture to my leaders just so that they knew what was going on. I would also try to leverage it to turn it into product knowledge for the other cast members. Essentially, we would claim it product knowledge. If we had too much that was expiring or going to waste, we would say, hey, let's not throw it away. Let's inform the cast on what we're selling and become knowledgeable in our product. So I would take these pictures on the stock iPhone. The one time I actually did break the rules was when I texted myself the photos from the stock photo and then immediately deleted them from the phone. This first picture, I counted how many cotton candy were going to waste that day. I believe it was about 60 bags, maybe, give or take a few. Um, and I threw them in a big pile. This stock room is technically above Country Bear Jamboree, just to give you a frame of reference. And cotton candy would get all shriveled and gross. So even though it wasn't technically inedible. It just didn't look good. It wasn't show quality, so we couldn't put it on the floor. Everything does have expiration dates on them. Um, expiration dates are definitely very... things expire much quicker than they would in the real world because you have to anticipate that travelers are going to get their food and sometimes bring it home with them. So the food was by no means expired, by no means inedible. So um, it was always heart-wrenching to have to throw everything away. The next picture was of a bucket of cookies. Um, well, it's you can see the cookies on top, but I'm sure there were caramel apples and cake pops down at the bottom. Um, that's just your standard, I think it's a five gallon bucket. And that was overflowing probably every other night. And this was just one tiny little store that made no money. 
and had to shut down because it didn't make any money and this was the astronomical amount of food waste that we had and I was completely appalled and I'm still appalled honestly. So that's why especially towards the second half of my program I developed a really great reputation with my leaders and with my peers and so I fought really really hard and I stocked that store a lot. It was one of my favorite things to do. So I fought really really hard for that product knowledge where there were some nights we were bringing home five and six pieces of food divided between 20, 25 cast members because we had so much food waste. Now Disney likes to say, I have no idea how true this is, but there's a thought, there's a hope that Disney turns food waste into bus fuel. I, I haven't fact checked. I have no idea if that's true. I have to believe some of the food still goes to waste, but hope, all hope is not lost. There is a thought that the food isn't completely wasted, but it's still heart wrenching knowing how much food is going to waste. We're talking large, buckets, large trash cans of food tucked in the back that just get filled from time and time. I mean, I would see churros and Mickey pretzels and lettuce. I mean, Pecos Bill had tons of food waste and we were dumping our food in the same dumpsters. So we'll move on from that. <clears throat> Before I start showing you this next group of photos, um, to give a little backstory, one of the fun opportunities I got as a cast member is backstage tours. Um, we got a leader that came in about halfway through my program who was really determined to give us as much opportunity as possible to give us as much fun as we could on the job. And so he definitely brought in more of those backstage tours. They didn't start, like I said, till the second half of my program. So I did three in total. I got to ride Space Mountain with the lights on. I did a walking tour of Haunted Mansion and I did a behind the scenes ride through Kilimanjaro safaris. I do not have safaris photos because it wasn't all that interesting photographically. It was a lot of here's the barns where the animals stay. Here's where the different trails go. Um, and we just got to learn more as we took the ride path instead of, you know, the general spiel that the cast members give. So no photos from that, nothing crazy backstage. But the first set of photos, I'm just going to flip through them as I'm talking right now, is um, Space Mountain with the lights on. These took place at the end of the ride where it slows down. It's kind of hard to explain if you haven't been on Space Mountain before. But um, I whipped out my phone real quick when I knew I wasn't going to lose it and took a quick few photos. I know that they're super blurry. I was on a moving ride vehicle. But it's kind of weird just to see how close these tracks actually are when the ride's normally in the dark in the pitch black and so it's kind of weird honestly it was freaky to ride with the lights completely on but it feels slower because it's a slow ride that's honestly more thrilling to ride space mountain completely pitch black if you ever go to a halloween party that's something new they started a few years back you can ride pitch black with rock and roll music the greatest experience I've ever had on Space Mountain. So I highly recommend that. That's honestly a better experience than with the lights on. So the next set of pictures is for my Haunted Mansion walking tour. This is a picture of the group of cast members that I went with on this tour. Um, this was Frontierland and Liberty Square. They were run by the same set of leaders and coordinators. So we had a lot of crossover with Liberty Square. That's why I worked several shifts in there. I was friends with cast members from both lands. By the end, we were calling each other Frolib. We were just the Frolib team. That definitely became more of a thing throughout my program. And I have to believe that's still a thing, but it's hard to say with COVID, but I digress. So I'm gonna scroll through these pictures again, just like Space Mountain, because I've got some backstory and they're not the highest quality of photos, so I don't wanna focus on them too much, but this, tour was taken before park open. All of these tours, all your backstage tours have to be taken before park open because you don't want to interfere with daily operations. The tour started at seven, which meant I had to be at the park by about 645. I took the bus because I didn't have a car and CP busing, especially in at that time of day, there's very few buses and it takes an hour and a half to get from the apartments to Magic Kingdom. When all was said and done, I think I woke up at about four in the morning to get to the 7 a.m. tour. That would take about an hour and 45 minutes so that we could be out by the time park opened at nine. So I was exhausted and I don't remember any of the fun facts at this point. I'm sure if someone told me they would start ringing a bell, but it was so early. I'm not a morning person, uh, but 
With this tour, we could not take pictures as the ride was going on. We could take pictures when we did our ride through at the end with flash. So these pictures are from a moving ride vehicle with flash on. The pictures don't feel too special necessarily, but it's just a very different perspective seeing the light. There's tons of backstory, tons of fun facts that I wish I knew the number of architects and designers that went into this ride. But what I do remember as I'm scrolling through the photos on my laptop is that once you get into the attic, it tells the story of this woman and her five or six husbands. All of the details talk about the amount of money that the family had, how she killed him, various details like that, just from some of the artifacts in the attic. Um, so that's kind of the scoop with all that. I wish I had more juicy secrets. I wish I had better photos. I did get to see the ballroom scene. I did not get to walk through it though. Um, but again, I couldn't take pictures as I was walking, which was really unfortunate. I'm not sure why they had that rule, but that was a strict rule. So I was not going to get in trouble. Again, rule follower was not going to get in trouble for whipping my phone out mid tour. So this last set of photos are the photos that I'm sure you all came here to see the ones you've been waiting for. This first one, I did break the rules again. I did it like three times. I know, I know, it's revolutionary. I wish I'd, I wish I'd done it more. Um, but this video, I took this on Snapchat. This is in the tunnels, so you get a really good look at the tunnels. Um, a semi-decent look in the, of the tunnels. Um, I was filling up Squeeze Breeze with a group of people. The Squeeze Breeze, as you'll see, are the squirty fans that you can buy in the park for like $25, something really expensive. There are filling stations down in the tunnels right by the elevator to go on stage. And the filling station went haywire and water was just squirting throughout the tunnel essentially. So I'm gonna show it to you with sound a couple times and then I'll try to break it down and give you some details about what's going on behind the scenes. This hose was just straight up squirting. Those things had so many problems. That filling station should have been able to fill like six squeeze breeze at the same time. And there were there was always a hose that wasn't working. And if you ran two of them at the same time, the water flow slowed down. It had so it was so janky. It was it was not magical in the slightest. But you can kind of see what this alcove looked like. On the other side of where the hoses are is the glow cage. It essentially, if you've ever seen what a storage unit in like a high rise apartment looks like. It's just cages, chain link cages. That's what the glow page looks like. Not magical. So if you see this elevator here, if you walk into the elevator and go straight out the other side, cause there is a door on the other side, you get into Frontierland. If you go in the elevator, go up and then go out the way you came in, you're in Adventureland. So it's confusing to tell you without showing you a map or walking you through it, but this elevator does go to both parts. If you are in Frontierland, it lets you out behind Trading Post. And if you're in Adventureland, you are behind Agraba. So if you know the parks, that just gives you some perspective. But uh, these were the carts we filled up with Squeeze Breeze when I did Glow for two weeks. That's, all, again, a whole other backstory. I'm happy to go into it, but that'll be another video. Um, we had to fill up Squeeze Breeze. I don't even know how many we sold on a given day. I think each cart had to have 30 on there to start, 30 or 40. And there were... 15 different stations. So we were filling up hundreds of hundreds of squeeze breeze a day. My mouth's getting dry from talking. Um, and this was over 4th of July weekend. I, yeah, I worked glow over 4th of July. So it was hot. It, the parks were crowded. It was exhausting. It was probably two of the worst weeks of my program. Again, different video, but I did take, when you have a hose going haywire in the tunnels, you can't not whip your phone out and just take a picture of the squirting happening. So it was, it was hilarious. I think I had a leader know that all of us were taking videos and no one said anything. So that was the riskiest photo I took, but I do have some more photos. I do have what you all I'm assuming came here to see. These were shared by a coworker of mine in our Frontierland group chat. She does not know I'm sharing these unless she's watching the video now and now she knows. <laughs> uh, I did not ask for permission to share them. My bad, but I'm not going to use her name just in case she wants to come back to the company. I'm not going to throw her under the bus, but I have tunnel photos and I'll try to give a little bit of story. I know the video is already getting a little long, but I'll go into a little bit of detail so you know what's going on. 
This first photo shows you directions to the different lands. This picture is taken in Liberty Square. The walls are colors representing each of the lands. So Liberty Square has this blue base with the red stripe and then every color has, is the same. Every land is the same on top. Um, to the right of that photo is a map of the tunnels. I don't have a picture of the map of the tunnels, but you can find it, you can Google it. So there was a lot of people that were worried about getting lost in the tunnels. And while yes, it is super, super easy to get lost in the tunnels, there's so many maps and directions pointed around. And if you can remember what color your walls are, you can remember, you can kind of figure out process of elimination, what land you're currently in. So this is just kind of some of the direction going on. This next picture is again, Liberty Square underneath. Um, the direction this picture is facing takes you up to Main Street. Um, it is sloped up there in the back. I don't know how well you can tell. Yes, the tubes over top do carry trash underneath the parks. Um, underneath the parks and over top of your head, it's disgusting. It's disgusting. Anyone who does the Keys to the Kingdom tour, which is the tour of the tunnels, has a fabulous time, but I promise you they're only showing you the good parts of the tunnels. There are some nasty, janky parts of the tunnels, and they are in Frontierland. It's unfortunate. If you watch the Imagineering story on Disney+, Plus, you get a glimpse of some of the nastiness in the Frontierland tunnel. You wouldn't necessarily know it unless you've been there, but there's dumpsters and there's no airflow. And so the smell just reeks. And the, the trash does drip from these tunnels. We call it tunnel juice. It's disgusting. If you see wet puddles on the floor of any of these pictures, I don't see one in this. It's trash, it's nasty, it smells horrific. So, I'm still scarred. There was one day I had to stop myself from throwing up because the smell was so bad rounding the dumpster. Just because of lack of airflow and it's literally in just that one corner. I don't have a picture of that one corner, but just throwing it all out there, it's, it's not all it's cracked up to be. And then this last, this picture is, I guess it's not last, but this picture is of the Frontierland tunnels. Um, this is not showing you the nasty stuff. Where the corner on the left is, just outside of the frame is a grease dump. So that smelled pretty bad. There was Pecos Bill dumping in there and then the quick service restaurant in Adventureland that I can't remember the name. They would dump in there and it just smelled so, so bad. If you kept going up this tunnel, so where you can see, just to the left, you can kind of see the doorway there, is the grab and go, which is a break room. It also smelled terrible. The microwaves were always disgusting. The food didn't taste good. That's not where you preferred to break, but we, when we had half hour breaks, it took us 10 minutes to get to the mouse, which is the cafeteria, and almost 10 minutes to walk back. And it was just a waste of a break. So if you didn't have an hour break, you generally just went to the grab and go. We had all kinds of jokes about it. It was super fun, even though it was disgusting. You just, you kind of make do and make memories anyways. Um, these are all boxes of glow toys. These things just get stored on pallets. Um, the white markings on the ground is Pargo parking. So they're like industrial golf carts that drive at seven miles an hour and run into things and crash into things and People aren't careful. I did crash a Pargo once, so that's another fun story for another day. Um, so you got to drive those around if you were transporting items, had to get to the other side of the park quickly. I did drive Pargos several times, so that was super fun, but they do have parking spots. You do have to parallel park them. Um, I've, got so, I've got so many stories I could talk about this for days, guys. Um, there are lockers for all of your stuff in here. Um, they're completely bashed in and don't actually lock because Pargos have hit them too many times. Um, but behind the photo is going into further into Frontierland. It does dead end this part of the tunnel. So this is just kind of a, a wing. If you go further behind, you'll see that hallway where the glow cage is and where the squirting was happening. That portion that I just showed you. So um, Nothing too, I mean, I don't think this is too special for me to look at, but I walked these tunnels almost every day for eight months. 
so I'm used to it. I could still walk on blindfolded even though it's been two and a half years since I was there, um, but I still have PTSD. And this last photo, second to last photo, there's just cute signs. They put Mickey everywhere, which is totally awesome because as a Disney fan, I think it's great, but there are a lot of people that aren't huge Disney fans that work there. So I feel like if you weren't a Disney fan, it'd be kind of annoying. It's great for the CP who wants the immersive Disney all day, every day kind of thing, which most of, of the CPs are. So there's, oh yeah, the pedestrians. It's pointing to pedestrians because the Pargos are on the other side. There's some weird stuff that happens, weird trucks that drive through the tunnels. It's, it's a time and a half. Um, if you've read the, what is that book series? The Kingdom Keepers? They talk about how there's a city underneath the parks. Almost true. It's only a slight exaggeration because there is a, the mouse, the mouse cafeteria, the cafeteria. There's hair cutters. Uh, and the way cars and parvos drive around, you'd think that there's highways. Um, so, and this last thing, um, we're gonna move on past the tunnels. I just wanted to show you one last thing, is the last time I clocked out on my last shift. This actually doesn't show you too much of backstage, but just kind of what the computers looked like, and I could I could share so many details and so many stories, but we'll do that another time. So. Hopefully this was exciting for you. Again, I've been wanting to share these photos for a really long time. I have a decent amount of backstage photos and I have memories and stories behind all of them and this is just the tip of the iceberg. If you want to hear more about my college program, if there's something in particular you want to learn about, um, whether it's my role, where I lived, um, my experience as a whole, good times, bad times, I could share stories for days. I get so sentimental about it. It was one of the best things I've ever done. Um, leave a comment below what you'd want to learn about it, if anything. Um, I've been holding off college program videos because the programs aren't happening at this time. So I wanted to wait until at least the announcement of when programs are going to come back. Just so it's not, so I don't want to be insensitive to people who've been fired, who've been let go, who have been furloughed, who are now coming back. Um, college graduates who had to rewrite their life because they lost their program. I'm kind of included in that. So once things get better, I want to absolutely 100% share my stories. So let me know what you would want to hear about and what you would like me to talk about and share. So I want to thank you so, so much for sitting through this long video. Again, I hope this was kind of interesting. You learned a little bit, saw a little more than you have in the past about Backstage Disney. Give this video a thumbs up hit that subscribe button. I have more content coming. I'm, I'm, I'm just getting started. So thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day, night, morning, whatever time you're watching. Bye everyone.